A policy analyst at a think tank in the United States got into trouble recently with Chinese audiences for saying this. Um, I think actually the best solution would be to bring Chinese companies and produce, uh, produce in the United States, and then we should steal their IP. This is Jake Werner at the Quincy Institute. The clip did the rounds on TikTok and also became the subject of an article in the English language Global Times. That's a Chinese newspaper owned and run by the Communist Party with a reputation for being quite hawkish. According to the article, Chinese observers said that the blunt speech showed the warped thinking of the US in competition with Chinese enterprises, as the US always skews market competition and violates global principles to stymie China's emerging industries. The article is saying that this is all about policymakers in the US seeking to prevent China from being able to compete on a fair playing field. It looks like the word stealing here has particularly provoked people. But if we look at what Werner actually said and the broader context in which he said it, he's actually saying something quite different. It looks to me like Werner was only using the word stealing for rhetorical effect. He doesn't really think of it as stealing because he doesn't really think that strong IP or intellectual property protections are a very good thing in the first place. If we look at Werner's broader work and writings, he's actually not in favor of strong intellectual property protections for anyone, including for American corporations. He sees this as quite damaging to progress overall. According to his social media posts, he's a fan of Dean Baker's work, which criticizes excessive intellectual property protections. If we take a look at Baker's article that Werner posted with approval, Baker argues two things. First, excessive intellectual property protections make important and necessary products, especially in fields like healthcare and software, much more expensive than they need to be. This has the effect of transferring huge amounts of wealth upwards away from regular people and into the hands of people with the patents. In fact, Baker argues this huge transfer of wealth upwards does even more to exacerbate inequality than tax cuts have done. A lot of people have made the point already, including me in this previous video, that inequality in both the United States and China and elsewhere, in fact, has been resulting in a rise in authoritarian politics and nationalism. This has set both these countries on a collision course with each other. If we want to reduce the likelihood of great power conflict in the future, reducing inequalities is an important thing to do. Therefore, loosening the intellectual property laws for all countries has to be part of that. Second, Werner has been consistently arguing that what's needed is more healthy competition with China, not the stamping out of competition by actively trying to exclude China from markets, as if this is an entirely zero-sum rivalry. Unfortunately, Werner says, this is what a lot of lawmakers in Washington are trying to do. They're trying to exclude China. But we know from looking back through history that this is exactly what has led us into violent great power conflicts in the past including world wars. I think we need to take into, the, into account the very real danger that even as we need to attend to the, the core economic problems in the United States, we also need to figure out a modus vivendi with China so that this doesn't spin out of control into, uh, into, into the kind of global conflicts that, uh, that we've seen historically. So what makes the difference between everyday economic competition uh, and the kind of uh, zero-sum existential economic competition that leads to war, uh, I, I think it's the, the, the choice between, uh, between open competition on the one hand and exclusion on the other. In an open competition, you're constantly meeting your adversary uh, in, some, in some space, whether that's a sports stadium or, or a political debate or in a commercial market. The, the competition is constantly renewed. Uh, there's possibilities for the other side, even if they lose this game, to come back and win the next one. Uh, it's an ongoing connection between the two competitors. And exclusion is quite different than that. That is severing the connection between the two sides, making sure that there is no competition. Uh, right now in DC, everything that we do that antagonizes China, we call competition. But in reality, the vast majority of these things are exclusion. Werner makes the point that he's actually in favor of tariffs 
against China, but he's not in favor of cutting China out of the US market completely. And he is in favor of evening out the playing field. He says the US should let in Chinese products and companies and learn all they can from Chinese innovations. That's what I think he means really when he says steal their IP. Then the two sides should compete in a healthy way to innovate better technology by building on what the other has already done. That will help to lower inequalities, which will help to lower nationalist tensions between the two sides. And it's also the best thing to do in order to advance technologies which are much needed by everyone in both countries and everywhere else, especially when it comes to things like healthcare and green technologies. Here he is again. And then we should steal their IP. I am completely in favor of that. That's how, that's how China developed. I, I think that's actually the only way that capitalism diffuses technology, which means uh, it's the best way to improve the wealth creating capacity of the economy. If you bottle up technological IP in one country or one firm, that impoverishes the rest of the economy. That impoverishes other firms. Um, so turnaround is fair play. We should invite the Chinese in, just as they invited American companies in. We should learn. We should, we should uh, you know, American companies should hire the people who work there and learn the, the intellectual property and the know-how that comes with working uh, at the cutting edge of the sector and, and then use that to, to make American companies competitive. So it's that, it's that other side, the, the pro-competition, pro-innovation side of the strategy that's missing right now. And, and I'm not seeing it on offer. And it's precisely not on offer because we feel that touching the Chinese is poison. But if we want to advance ourselves, and if we want to advance, want to avoid conflict, we have to maintain that connection with China and figure out a way to make it sustainable. Thank you for watching.